I am guessing you lot are a skeptical bunch. Like for example, throughout season nine, you may have been asking yourself, is this a prop or does it actually fly? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you got one hell of an answer recently because we flew it from here, Torrance, California, all the way to EAA Air Venture 2018, which is another way of saying a complete orgy of planes in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And we stopped in Telluride, Colorado, as well as Kansas City, Missouri, and shot one hell of a travel episode. So that will be coming up later in the season. Uh, but we also burned a hell of a lot of av gas, so much so that when we got back, got some really dirty looks from Kumo, and he uh, basically put the smack down and said we have to drive this for a while. So turning lemons from that fickle fuzzball into some lemonade, and let's find out what it's like to live with a very unattractive but rear-wheel drive electric car. I did get to negotiate that it didn't have to be the basic one. This one is like the fancy one that's been tweaked. So what's it like to live with a black and red box? Okay, let's try something different today. I really, let's go somewhere different. You and I have driven around, what, Beverly Hills, Venice, Manhattan Beach, downtown LA. Let's go to San Pedro. Um, I know that probably means nothing to you if you are not in Los Angeles. That's basically in between Palos Verdes and where you see the port of Long Beach. We're gonna take the 110 freeway down there, and the reason why we're gonna get on a freeway in an electric car is uh, this has got more power, so let's get that out of the way. Uh, I'd love to show you the motor, but I can't because it's hidden back like there. Uh, so this now has 184 horsepower and 199 pounds of torque. So that's what, 14 more horsepower and uh, 15 pounds of torque more. We always like more torque. So let's put this into sport mode and put our foot into it on the freeway. Make sure there's no pull its eye. And I gotta say, it, it's quick. But the thing is, it was quick before because it's an electric car. Uh, just so you can see, you can see where they load all the stuff that comes in from around the world here at the port. It's quite an interesting thing, especially when you come over in an airplane. You can see the bridge over there. Really, this is pushing power. This is not pulling power. Because remember, this is a rear wheel drive electric car. And that's why I liked it so much in our first first drive review of the regular i3. I think what happens here is it's a combination of the extra horsepower and torque. So let's again try it again. But remember, weight is an important factor here because this thing is made out of exotic materials. So all the body panels, if you remember, carbon fiber, reinforced polymer. But more important, all the structure is actually carbon fiber. So that brings the car that does not have the motorcycle engine, this one does, 3,005 pounds. So when you think about it, 184 horsepower, 199 pounds of torque, that's, what is that, Elantra Sport territory? But an Elantra Sport is kind of more weight than this. It's a little bit sharper. Does it drastically transform the car in terms of the power? No, but it's always welcome to have more torque. Okay, we're trying to get onto Harbor Boulevard South, and of course the Prius has to ruin the traffic. They just decide, I'm going to make a right turn from the left lane. It, is that in the sales contract when you buy these cars that you have to completely screw up traffic? It, maybe you can answer that in the comments below those Prius drivers. So thus far we've learned the electric motor has been tweaked, but what else makes an i3S an S? Because an M, it certainly ain't. Turns out there's some things going on underneath here, biggest being the wheels and the tires. If you remember the tech review we did on the basic i3, this department, comical numbers. 155, 70, R19s all the way around. Here it's staggered, so in the front, it's 175, 55, 20s in the front, and in the back, 195, 50, 20s. Now, still bicycle tires, but let this roll around in your brain for a minute. The width of even the big wheels and tires, 5.5 inches in the front and 6 inches in the back. Compare that to the Grüne Hülle GT-R we had in here. That was like 325s. We're talking steamrollers. Uh, that does all of this, 
aids to the overall track width has changed here. It's 1.4 inches wider. And then they've changed the uh, anti-roll bars, dampers, as well as springs, all stiffer, but it makes the car sit lower. It's about, I shouldn't say about a half an inch lower to the ground. It's four tenths of an inch lower to the ground. Now, that's a lot of change going on here. They also made this change. There's a sport mode. Odd in an electric car, I guess not so odd because you know you got all that torque, but it doesn't change the dampers, they're still passive, but it makes the steering stiffer and then changes the throttle mapping. But all of this put together, it only changes the weight by 44 pounds, so it goes to 3,005 pounds for the full EV model. Not bad when you consider this is a car that has a raft of batteries and electric motor, and really that result is because of what this thing is made of. And I'm going to say it again, carbon fiber reinforced polymer. So how does all that impact driving a Deutsche Brotbox? We're getting into the residential area down here and you can see the marina down there, the new Cabrillo Marina. Neat little spot actually here in Los Angeles. Anyway, what's the impact of all those changes? It doesn't lean as much. You don't feel like uh, the pivot point sits on the back or the rear wheels. It changes the driving experience where it's a little bit more stable on all four wheels. Okay, so as we get to the bottom here, which Point Furman is right down there, the big thing you can tell as I'm going around on the 360, please don't try this at home, is you feel in the old one, there would be a squat in the outer rear wheel, where here you don't feel it as much. Here it feels like it's more suspended like a BMW. There's composure like a BMW. And that's a function of not just the stiffer suspension, it's a function of the suspension plus the bigger wheels and tires. And I feel, uh, you know, the first, I've read some of the forums on these things, and the first year of production, people felt it rode stiff, and that was a big function of the very, very small wheels and tires, the bicycle tires. Here they're still very small, as we talked about earlier, but at least it's usable around town now where you feel like, oh my God, it'll actually drive like a normal car. You don't feel like it's, it's a toy anymore. The other big thing that's noticeable is the steering. So if I go back to comfort mode or even eco pro mode, where it would give me the full 107 miles of range. Let's do the pickup here, see how eco, oh wow, what a difference. It's like a slug in this eco pro mode. Uh, I'll be honest, I've driven the car now like seven, eight days, and this is the first time I'm driving Eco Pro, and this is not a pleasant experience. So let's go back to comfort. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is not for acceleration. It's you notice a big difference in the steering. Let's like let's turn here. And it doesn't feel sloppy, but it feels kind of like a Buick when you're doing the steering. Well, you go into sport mode, and now it's a whole different kettle of fish when you drive this thing. So if I'm gonna drive over and make turns around a neighborhood like this, let's go ahead and avoid this traffic here by doing another one of these 360s in this closed road. Don't, don't tell anybody what we're doing. So at the top of this episode, I nagged you again about following me on Instagram. Now, I never want you to follow me on any of these social things just because I tell you, I wanna give you a reason to follow me. I feel I've done that over the past nine years However, this is probably the most compelling reason to date because if you didn't follow me on Instagram, you missed this. So a PS to that little clip. When I got back to the California Republic, a friend of mine who does follow me on Instagram said, dude, that was some Star Wars Death Star trench flying kind of shit. This one, and as well as the one we had before, they gave me the one with the motorcycle engine in the back. So the generator, if you run out of electricity, the thing can work in today's infrastructure. So it's kind of like a Volt. Uh, I like that. It's one of the reasons why I've suggested the Volt to so many people because you can have an EV car and use it in today's infrastructure. And guess what? If you want to leave town, you can still leave town with it. This is the same thing, although that generator, it's much smaller and the gas tank is much smaller. It doesn't really do as much, doesn't have as much total range as, say, a Volt. Uh, but what's interesting is I've never used it. 
Because this is the bigger battery like we drove, it's a 33 kilowatt hour battery in this thing, uh, I have never had an instance where I need to use any of the 59 miles of range from the motorcycle engine. Now granted, I do have an electric car charger in the garage, so I'm fast charging it at night. Uh, when I go to places, I can plug it in. I mean, it's Los Angeles, there's plenty of grid, basically the infrastructure to have a fast charger. And even if you don't, it never, it's never gone below 40 miles of range. And I've used the thing all day. I've never stopped and said, well, I need to file a flight plan because I'm using an electric car. I don't want to have any range anxiety, blah, blah, blah. This Aleph, it's not. Aleph drives like, well, a, a better Prius. This drives like a BMW that's been carved out of one billet of aluminum. I would argue this is not a function of this is the sportier model. I think this is, it should be only one model, just the S. Or really, they should have said, this is the update for 2018, 2019, and there really shouldn't be the car with the small wheels and tires. Now, here's the catch. Now, let's put our foot into it. I'm still in sport mode. You lose a bit of range because, think about it, you're getting more resistance with more contact of rubber on the road, wider tires, and obviously with a sport mode. And what happens is you lose, what is it, seven miles of stated range. So instead of 114 miles of range, you get 107 miles of range. If we're really going to understand what it's like to live with it, you know the script by now. So let's get on with it. I don't have high hopes for this at all. But it doesn't mean we're not going to give it the old college try. I have taken the liberty of putting one seat down because there's no way on God's green earth this is going to get in here without a seat down. Here we go. Let's try not to scratch the carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Oh, this actually may work. Hold on a minute. That works. Wait, hold on, hold on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Wonders will never cease at least German ones. The other thing I have to tell you, the design is growing on me. Granted, the outside, it's still ugly. It's still a German bread box. But the interior, it's not pretty. It's functional. That's the best way to describe it. I've gotten used to, believe it or not, the iDrive. Maybe it's just I'm getting old and I'm used to it now and I've been trained with these ridiculous like unified controller things. Anyway, this now has the uh, wireless Apple CarPlay like it started in the 5, went to the 7. I'm going to clarify this. I am not going down on record as calling this interior attractive. What I am saying is it is the intersection of usable, really functional, and really, really good color, trim, and texture. That's what makes this... Again, attractive is a very, very, very strong term. I would say something I could live with. I even like some of the coloring in here. But at the end of the day, for me to live with this, I think I would need like an old school sports car that is hard to get in and out of to make me feel good about myself. So I've been struggling over the past couple of days trying to summarize this experience. And I feel strongly that the most prudent way to do so is to play a mini round of the options game because it will put everything into perspective for us. So without further ado, let's dive right in. 2018 BMW i3 S with range extender. That means there's a motorcycle engine in there somewhere in addition to the electric motor. $51,500. To that we add Melbourne red metallic. That's the two-tone red and black. And I gotta say, there's a lot of i3 drivers in LA, a lot. And this combo of the two-tone, the red, black, with the black wheels, they look at it with sincere jealousy. It's kind of funny. $500. Uh, then we add Giga World. That's a fancier trim. $1,800. Then we add the Tech Driving Assistance Package, Navigation, some other stuff. $2,500. Then we add my favorite option, which is colored seat belts. In this case, Blau. Well spent at $300. 
Uh, then we had a questionable option, not so much the option, but the cost of it. Uh, park distance control. That's like radar in the bumpers. $750. And then we're going to move on to something that raises my blood pressure that has been an open letter to the folks at BMW in Munich before. So we're going to do it again. Here's another open letter. You really going to charge me for Apple CarPlay? Seriously? Every Kia, Hyundai, Mercedes, some Toyotas now, and all GM cars have it fitted as standard. GM even gives you Android Auto as standard, so you get both. You're really going to charge me 300 bucks? Seriously, go back to the drawing board and fix that. Then we move on to destination charge, $995, for a total suggested retail price of $58,695. Read that in. 59 grand for this. That's a lot of money. There is no way to sugarcoat it. Now I get it, man. This is a high-tech car that is made out of exotic materials, practically frankincense and myrrh. You got the carbon fiber reinforced polymer body panels, carbon fiber cage. This is, this is made or really sold to you by the gram, not by the pound. Totally get it. But 59 grand, that's, I think that's a bridge too far. Now, does it diminish the way it drives? No, I mean, you saw this thing. Put aside how you saw how it drove. I have gotten to the point where I have warmed up to these so much, even the way they look, but more so how they drive around town, that I have seriously considered buying one used for myself. It is that much fun to drive, and it's a function of the strength of the structure, the power from the electric motor, and most importantly, that it goes to the rear wheels. So the vehicle itself is a wonderful mousetrap, but at 59 grand, I feel like you're asking too much. So I'm gonna turn this around to you guys. This has been a great experience and it is a great vehicle, but do you feel it's worth 59 grand? Most of them, yes, are leased and the resale on these things is very low so you can get a bargain. But my question is, is 59,000 or even 51,000 for the basic one, the right price for this flash car? Why or why not? And if you don't agree, how much would you pay? and what region of the world do you hail from? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV on Word, Motoman TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until see you next time, bish beta.